Good morning on the 21st of January and uh, welcome to today's Daily Post. Our scriptures, thoughts and ideas that we hope you will find helpful and uplifting through the day. We begin with a scripture from Psalm 7 and verse 17. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. If we're reading the Bible in a year, today we move into the book of Exodus, chapters 1, 2 and 3, and move on through the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 1 to 21. Thoughts of the day. We didn't write the plan. We're only expected to follow it without question. It's hard to determine where to draw the line between being nice and not hurting people's feelings and standing up for what you believe. Difficult choice sometimes. It is easy to be brave from a safe distance. The motivational thought for the day. You can do anything if you have enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is the yeast that makes your hope rise to the stars. With it, there is accomplishment. Without it, there is only alibis. On this day, in 1793, in Paris, Louis XVI of France is guillotined after being found guilty of treason. In 1901, uh, Queen Victoria dies at Osborne House on the Isle of Wight in the UK after a brief illness. 1944, on this day, 447 German bombers attacked London. And on uh, this day in 1952, the first broadcast of the BBC radio comedy program, The Goon Show. It starred Peter Sellers, who went on to be a movie star, Harry Seacom, a famous singer, Spike Milligan, a comedian, and Michael Benteen, a comedian. 1954. On this day, American launched the USS Nautilus, the world's first nuclear-powered submarine. In 1972, on this day, in the United Kingdom, the Irish Republic and Denmark joined the European Common Market. In 1976, on this day, Concorde took off on its first scheduled flight. And in 2020, the world's oldest asteroid impact at 2.2 billion years old is found at Yarrabubba in Western Australia. It may have ended an ice age and was reported on this day in the Nature Communications magazine. Personal story of the day. A failure no longer. As I glanced through the mail, some words on a card from a charitable organisation caught my eye. We need your discards. The meaning was straightforward and simple. Whatever you don't want, we'll take. Those household items that you call rubbish, rejects, throwaways and junk we'll use to help people in need. While thinking about such a collection of cast-offs, I recall something that I had read in the book of First Samuel. A company of desperate men gathered around an uncrowned king who was running for his life. The 400 men who joined David at the cave at Adullam were in distress, in debt, and discontented. Each one faced difficulty and discouragement. So David became captain over them, we're told in 1 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 2. In many ways, Christians are a collection of desperate people who have answered the invitation of Jesus Christ. In Matthew 11, verse 28, we are told, Come to me. Through the anointing of the Spirit, we welcome Christ as our captain, saviour, leader and lord. 
we come as we are so that we can become what he wants us to be. If you feel like a moral or spiritual discard, call upon Christ. Use the Spirit and serve the Lord. Loners and losers are welcome at the door. The crucified and risen Christ is the master of redemption for all who turn to him. Praise the Lord. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first, the profession of faith. Scripture from James, from sorry, from Proverbs chapter 24, verses 26 to 28, and references from James chapter 3, verses 9 to 12. Every man shall kiss his lips that giveth a right answer. Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thine house. Be not a witness against thy neighbour without cause, and deceive not with thy lips. Proverbs uh, 24 verses 26 to 28, as we said. When people are polled about how much they trust certain people in various professions, used car salesmen usually rank low on the list. As one survey participant said, I can't believe a word that comes out of a salesman's mouth. He says, I want to get you the best deal, but all I hear is, I want to get all your money. I usually just figure that the opposite of whatever he says is really the truth. Unscrupulous car salesmen may have earned the reputation for their profession, but James wants to make sure that Christians aren't described as liars and untrustworthy. In our verse today, he continues his explanation of the impact of our speech on our ability to please God. James thinks that duplicity, that is saying one thing and doing another, or in this case saying two different things, is a serious problem. Earlier, he noted that pious words that aren't accompanied by merciful actions are the opposite of faith. Chapter 2, verse 16. Now he points out what is problematic about a duplicitous, that is, a double tongue. This duplicity manifests itself as someone who will both bless God and slander people who love God. These patterns of speech would not characterize those who have been given a new birth in Christ. We are changed springs from which should flow sweet and renewing waters, not old bitter water that pollutes everything around us. See verse 11. And if we are truly changed, we should see the evidence of that in our speech. The key point James emphasizes is consistency. We saw in earlier verses that our actions should be consistent with our profession of faith. Now James notes that our speech itself should be consistent with our profession of faith. We shouldn't have words and deeds that don't match up, nor should we have words of praise for God and then words of destruction for the people of God. <laughs> Living wisely means that we strive to use our bodies and our words in a way that blesses both God and others. Again, wise words. The second thought, the eye of the storm. Scripture from Daniel 6 and verse 22. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him Innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Cyclones or hurricanes are spinning storms that can measure several hundred kilometres in diameter. Their devastating winds begin to be clocked at 100 kilometres an hour and may exceed 260 kilometres an hour. Yet, in the centre of these storms is a space of about 30 kilometres in diameter, 
where everything is perfectly calm. Surrounded by roaring winds and heavy rains, the eye of the storm is a site of serenity and tranquility. Daniel occupied such a spot. While confined in the den of lions, he was surrounded by a pride of hungry felines that would have loved nothing better than a good meal. Yet, through the intervention of God's angels, Daniel had nothing to worry about. In the midst of a terrifying situation, he experienced God's perfect peace and calm. The storms of life are bound to hit all of us at some point. The strong winds of adversity and the heavy rains of affliction show no respect for a person's age or circumstances. Yet, in the midst of these trials, God offers to those who walk in the power of the Spirit a place of perfect peace and safety. Isaiah testifies in verse 3 of chapter 26, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee, because he trusteth in thee. If you feel like a cyclone is blowing through your life, a hurricane of debt, depression, disease or deprivation, look to God, who is able to keep you in his eye. Cast your cares upon him, and he will provide a place of rest for your soul. Wonderful comfort in those words again. Praise the Lord. The facts of the day. A fetus develops fingerprints at 18 weeks, an individual from that point on. Fingernails grow nearly four times faster than toenails. And the closing thought for the day, Lord, let me never be too busy to support or uphold your people. Thank you for joining us. We do hope that you found the uh, thoughts and ideas and scriptures helpful and edifying and uplifting for this day. And we hope that you'll join us again tomorrow. And in the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.